Good afternoon. The Metropolitan Board of Zoning Appeals is now in session for the regularly scheduled meeting of May 20th, 2021. My name is Lisa Mitten. I will be presenting the cases to the board for the review in today's public hearing. We are convened here at the Sunny West Conference Center and the Howard Office Building. For these public hearings, the board reviews the correspondence submitted in support of and opposition to these cases. The board also reviews correspondence and recommendations from other government agencies in preparation for the hearings. In today's hearings, the staff will present the site plans, maps, photographs, and all other documents that comprise the case record. At the conclusion of the staff presentation, the appellant will present his or her case to the board. After the appellant's presentation, anyone here wishing to speak in support of the appeal may, may do so. If any opposition is present, the board will then hear from those parties. After the opposition presents its testimony, the appellant will have a period for rebuttal. According to the BZA rules, the appellant has five minutes for presentation if no opposition is present. In contested cases, the BZA rules allow 10 minutes for each side to present testimony. Should the appellant wish to provide rebuttal testimony, the appellant should reserve some portion of that allotted 10 minutes. At the conclusion of each hearing, the board will deliberate and then vote on that case. The board is vested by the power to act on these cases under the provisions of the Metro Zoning Code, section 1740-180. All section numbers that we refer to come from the Metro Zoning Code, which applies to the entire jurisdiction of the metropolitan government. The zoning code was adopted by the Metro Council and became effective on January 1st, 1998. I will introduce the entire zoning code and make it part of today's record. The Metro Code requires a recording of these proceedings. Because BZA meetings are recorded for Metro National Network, it is imperative that anyone addressing the board come forward to the podium and speak into the microphone. All speakers should identify themselves by name and address and make their desired presentation. The Metro Code requires four members of our seven member board to establish quorum. The code also requires at least four affirmative votes to grant an appeal. In the event that five or more members are present, but the appeal fails to receive four affirmative votes, the case will remain on the board's agenda for the next 30 days. <coughs> Applications that fail to receive four affirmative votes within 30 days of the public hearing shall be deemed denied by operation of law. Pursuant to board rules, an agreed party may appeal board decisions to Chancery or Circuit Court within 60 days of the entry of the BZA order. Additionally, as per the BZA rules, an aggrieved party may file a motion for rehearing by the BZA within 60 days of the original hearing date. After that time elapses, the board's decision becomes final and no further action can be taken. If your appeal is granted, you are required to obtain the permit for which you applied. A permit must be obtained within two years for the board approval to remain valid. It should also be noted that if false or misleading testimony is presented to the board, any board approval could be revoked at a later date by means of a show cause hearing before the BZA. Mr. Chairman, I submit that all cases have been filed in proper order, all appellants have been notified by certified mail, and all legal notice requirements have been fulfilled. Great, thank you. We do have a preliminary announcement regarding the withdrawal. Case 2021-071, located at 1125 4th Avenue South, has been withdrawn from today's docket. We are now ready to proceed with the cases to be heard today. First case to be considered is case 2021-063, located at 1452 Pawnee Trail. This was deferred from the May 6th meeting to allow for additional information to be gathered. Is the applicant present? Yes. After I present the slides, you may come forward and speak. Is there anyone here in opposition to this case? <laughs> Seeing none, let me go ahead and present the slides and then the appellant may speak. Here's an overview uh -huh. of the parcel highlighted in red, showing that it is within the CS zoning district. The appellant is seeking to construct a garage and maintain an existing porch that was constructed without a permit. The contextual setback required, here's an, I'm sorry, an aerial view. Here's the site plan provided. The contextual setback is 31.55 feet and the applicant is requesting a 23.61 foot setback for the proposed garage and 18.09 foot setback for the porch which was constructed. Here's the street view of the property showing the, the porch. Side view, I believe these are the extra views that were requested by the board at the last meeting. There's the, the existing mm -hmm. slab. 
and views of the slab in relation to the backyard and the shed and the surrounding areas. Applicant may now come forward, introduce yourself by name, address, and state your case. There. Steve Rideout, 1452 Pawnee Trail in Madison. Just continuing to try to get the garage permit. And then I think, sir, where I think where we left it was that you were going to provide us some photos, which I think you did, yes. uh, to give us some perspective in the back yep. of the slope of the the yard. Uh, going toward the back and the distance from the mature trees that um, that were discussed at the last hearing. And I think that you also had stated that, and I, just to, if you would reconfirm, that the garage that you uh, are proposing is going to be built on the existing slab, that you're not going to take the slab back or forward, that just on the existing slab that you're planning to build the garage. Correct. Okay. And so that by building it on the slab, you don't uh, have any, I mean, I think there was some question as to whether the slab was thick enough to build on, and I don't know, I'm not the architect, but that looks like a pretty thick slab, at least in the back, but you don't anticipate that that there would be any construction issues that would uh, that would damage the trees. I mean, part of that was, your argument last time was to protect the trees. Correct, that's part of it. Okay. Is there any, any questions based on the new photos, or does that satisfy the board's request for new information? There we go. Uh, it satisfies my, can you, I think, I did want to, I think it was mentioned, this is, in the, is this in the CS or RS-15 zoning? Because it was noted to be CS, and I just wanted the record to show it the right way. His, his survey says RS-15. It is, it's RS-15. Okay, cool. Thank you. Were there any other questions from the board? Was there any other? Oh, for me? Was there any other additional information that you'd like to provide? No, that's that's pretty much it. Okay. Anything else? All right, then we'll close public hearing. I think that we were very kind of empathetic. Uh, I guess the question was, does a question is to the board, does the did the pictures, the two pictures that he provided give us the information that we needed to uh, that grant us variance? For me it for me it does. I mean it, you, you can kinda of see in here that it's probably outside the drip line of that tree behind it, so it's gonna there's a good chance of being able to save that thing. And if you move it back, I think that that could hurt that tree there and um, I mean, he's not, his, his setback is still b behind the front of his house currently. His, his current house sits out in front. So he's, still, he's still going back from there. So I think it satisfies, you know, okay. I, you look at any of his neighbors, I'm sure they could build out the side of their house too. It just ha so happens that his house looks to be, it probably predated the zoning code and is built in front of that setback. So I don't have an issue there. Is that motion? Uh, oh, I thought. I'm oh, sorry, did you have? I was wondering if Ms. Carpenter had anything. Oh, I was looking over at you. All. I was trying to remember who had questions from last time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I was going to say that I think I thank the applicant because I think these pictures definitely demonstrated his hardship. So, um, Mr. Chairman, if you want me to make the motion, I can. <laughs> that would be that would be great. And Ms. Hundy, I can't I can't see your your red light too. Oh, okay. So just if you want to just but jump jump in if you want to say something because the, the okay. clock is blogging it. So. Can, can I throw something in before the motion? Please I don't do. think we've talked about the front porch, which is really just like a deck. Can we see the photos of that again? Okay. So the, there's part of the variance. I guess there's two parts, and one is about allowing that front porch um, to remain. And um, I don't think... I mean, it's not covered. I think we would we should put in some kind of provision, like you always do, yeah. that it will never be covered and and um, enclosed. Yeah. Ms. Davis. Um, so I'll make a motion that we approve 
the variances as requested based off the hardships that were demonstrated and that we add the condition that the front porch never be enclosed or covered and that it pretty much, if there's any repairs or changes in the future, it sort of stays in sort of its footprint that we've already seen today. All right, I'll second that. There's a motion, there's a second. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion, say aye, raise your hand. All those opposed, that motion passes. Good luck, thank, thank you. you. All right, next case. The next case before us is case 2021-069. I believe the appellant is here. Is there anyone here in opposition to case 2021-069? Seeing that there is opposition, once I present the case slides, the appellant may speak, but know that you should reserve a portion of your time should you want to do rebuttal after the opposition speaks. Here's an aerial view of the property located at 2061 Shaw Road, requesting a special exception within the AR2A zoning district. They're seeking to, to open a camp at this location by special exception. Here's an aerial view showing the surrounding area. Here's the site plan provided showing the proposed structures and campsites. Here's a street view of the property and the surrounding areas. The appellant may now come forward and state your name, address, and present your case. Hi, my name is Jay Fulmer, uh, 2002 Richard Jones Road, and this is uh, Miss Aaron Wolf. And your address? One seven one eight Welcome Lane. Um, so Miss Wolf um, had several conversations um, with the zoning department about how this use would qualify as a camp under the special exception um, clause under the current uh, zoning. It respects all the 150 foot setbacks um, and it is classified as a camp because they do not take any on-site reservations um, amongst many other of the technical criteria. Um, but I'm gonna let her explain a little more about her other locations and her functions and how they operate and uh, just so you can get a better feel for what they do. Thanks for your time. Um, Again, my name is Erin Wolf, and I'm the owner of Pomelo Grove, and we're a uh, boutique eco camp offering a premier glamping experience. Um, our guests stay in chic, locally built campers and safari tents outfitted with amenities um, sourced from local small businesses. Um, it is our mission to connect people to nature through an elevated, um, thoughtfully curated camping experience. We aim to show guests love through warm hospitality and unique experiences. Um, and we partner with local small businesses to integrate amenities, products, and services to dazzle our guests and, su and support our creative local community. Um, in my exhibit, I provided some photos of my current operation to give you a sense of the aesthetic and how the campers and um, other and lodgings that people stay in are positioned in the land. Um, I just would like to reiterate that we're not um, a bring your own rig campground, we're not a low end price point, and we are not a venue or an event space. Um, I'm, I'm hopeful when we land in our permanent location, hopefully on Shaw Road, to start integrating group experiences um, that are nature oriented. So yoga, group meditations, tea ceremonies, nature and, home, and homesteading themed workshops, um, hiking, volleyball, and other outdoor games. Uh, just a little bit about feedback that I've gotten from my guests over the past year in operation. Uh, consistently, people talk about how they appreciate having a clean and safe space to unplug and connect with nature. Um, they appreciate that we've provided a camping experience that is elevated and also made easy. Um, we've figured out all the quirks and things that can sometimes be challenging to novice campers, um, and so they appreciate having kind of a turnkey, easy, easier camping experience. 
Um, and then also, they love having a safe space to gather with friends and family um, and just enjoy nature and each other's company. And uh, that was really important over the past year during um, COVID-19. Um, just a couple points about the site plan. Um, the photos that I included are consistent with the vision for the site plan. Uh, what I've been doing has been working well and people love what I offer. And so I'm not trying to change dramatically from what I've been doing so far. Um, but in our site plan, you can see we have a low density combination of safari tent and camper sites. Um, I think it's important to keep people spread out. That's what they've loved about the experience I'm providing right now. They're not on top of each other. They have their own space and their own bit of the field in front of them. Um, it's really important to me to maintain the rural nature of the property. Um, we are keeping development minimal with just one parking lot and one pavilion and bathhouse structure. Um, and the main purpose for that structure is to provide a place for people to gather in inclement weather and then also for me to store things and um, be able to have a home base for um, running the operation. But other than that, um, we want to keep devel development minimal and um, we want the highlight of the experience to be nature. So um, we're maintaining as many existing trees as possible. We don't want to do any massive regrading. Um, we really want to highlight the beautiful property as it exists now. Um, just a couple other notes about the site plan that um, I've had discussions with community members about. Um, we're creating a centered property entrance so that there's no headlight disturbance. Um, the 26 car parking lot is is will result in a minimal traffic increase to the area. And then also on the back of the property, there's some trails that intersect and I am planning to install fencing and signage so that it's clear where boundary lines are and so that other people's property lines are respected. Um, yeah, and then just general positive community impact. I believe that I will improve street appeal by transitioning this property that is pretty overgrown with some dilapidated buildings and, and transform it into a well-manicured and well-maintained property. Um, I have a, a higher end business, so having a well-maintained property is really important to me. Um, I believe that my small business has, has soul, and I think that something unique and different um, and, and run by a small business owner will enhance the character of the area. Um, my customers are higher spend customers and so I believe that they will be the type of customers interested in the type of unique experience and interested in um, patronizing unique kind of hidden local small businesses as well. And then obviously the sales and hotel tax um, income to the county. So. Ma'am, did you have a did you have your community meeting? Yes, sir. When when did that happen, and how many folks were there, and what was the result of that meeting? The meeting was on May 11th, I believe it was. It was a week back from Wednesday. Um, there were 20 people consistent on the meeting, consistently on the meeting, and then 10 additional people that logged on and dropped off at some point. So um, a Zoom meeting. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, we had a lot of discussions about various uh, concerns about noise and disturbance that I addressed. Um, there were concerns about um, uh, like fire codes and tornadoes and um, uh, septic systems and my answer to those questions were that I don't have the full plan yet, but we will be complying with all of the codes that we need to comply with, with the, with Davidson County. Um, there were questions about, you know, I think around the nature of what a special exception is. Um, I think some people felt like 
perhaps confused it with like a rezoning. Um, and so um, I did follow back up with the community um, with a more detailed explanation of what a special exception is and um, how it is tied to this specific site plan. And so the use of the property can't change from what it is now um, or from this specific use if it's approved. And have you talked to your council member? I did have a meeting with Ms. Gamble uh, prior to the community meeting um, and, and, and just briefed her on everything that I was gonna review in the meeting. And then I did follow back up with her um, with a recap of all of the concerns and my responses um, after the meeting as well. Okay. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, ma'am. Uh, and and I, I'm sorry, I didn't realize that you're here. And so, you know, per our rules, you are free to speak anytime you'd like or not at all, but just, and you, there's no time limit to, you, to, you know, so sometimes. I'll speak Awesome, thank you. Okay, wonderful. So you, yeah. don't, you don't have to relay her thoughts because she's <laughs> sure. here to relay her own thoughts, but I just wanna make sure that uh, it's always helpful and a special exception to meet with your council person and it sounds like you've been in close communication there. Yes, sir. Um, and do you, it, I think you, there was a review uh, or something in your marketing material or the, Presentation. Yes. Uh, what is Pomelo Grove? Is that the name of what this is going to be, or is that something you yes, already? Yes, sir. Okay. And then yes. do you already have a place like this in Tennessee? There was a yes, review sir. that said it's the best thing in Nashville, which <laughs> made me think that you already exist somewhere in Nashville. Um, so Close I don't. <laughs> it's not in Nashville. The Nashville area, I guess, okay, is what well, they Nashville, meant. But, right. So in, in the in, area. It's it's um it's located on Bloomsbury Farm, which is in Smyrna. Okay, in Smyrna. Okay. And then how long has that been? It'll be one year on June seventh. Okay. All right. Are there questions from the board for the applicant? I, I was curious because I I know that the noise is definitely going to be something that I, the neighbors are concerned about, and along with traffic. And well, can you explain what a spiritual sound bath is? I know that sounds. <laughs> I mean, I just wasn't familiar with that. So. Sure. Okay. Yeah, it's a um, it's a meditative. It's a form of meditation that uses, um, I'm, sh I'm not sure if you've seen those like metal bowls with like the um, wooden paddle that creates kind of like a vibration sound um, and like rain sticks and things like that. So it's a, it's a form of meditation, if that makes sense. Okay. So it's not like, not like any amplified noise or anything like no. that? No. Okay. Just check. No, it's okay. the Thank purpose you. is to, uh, yeah, to meditate. And you okay. have no speakers on your property. No speakers on our property. Okay. Mm -mm. And, and the letter from the neighbor in Williamsburg. Yes. Um, I also have a letter from, and I'm happy to provide you guys a copy of this letter, but this letter is from my counterpart at Bloomsbury Farm, who I negotiated my contract with and who's been my main contact at Bloomsbury Farm. Um, and this letter attests to my level of integrity as a business owner, in addition to the fact that there's been no noise or disturbance or issues since I've been operating on their property. And there are three um, separate private residences on the property. Um, so, um, she is, um, yeah, well informed to attest to that. Okay. How about lighting on the site? I'm sorry? Lighting on the site. Um, I'm planning on just having kind of like cafe string lights outside of each, um, campsite. And then there'll be lighting inside the pavilion. Mm -hmm. What about the parking lot? Is the parking lot lit? Um, we haven't planned any lighting on the parking lot but if that's required, we will comply. Oh, I'm not sure it's required. I was just wondering <laughs> what the plan was. Yeah. It, the, the desire is to have as minimal lighting as possible. Yeah. Uh, people are supposed to come and go during the daylight hours. And so if we can comply with code and not light the parking lot, that'd be great. Uh, but that's just another code issue we need to address. Yeah, I wasn't implying it was required. I was just wondering what the plan was. Thanks. Have you, have you done a... I mean, you probably haven't done a traffic study on this yet or, or anything like that. You know how much how many cars will come in and out every day on average? We haven't done a traffic study, but the parking lot has 26 spaces. Okay. So, and, but I guess my question is, do people just, well, at your current location, do people come and stay the whole time or are they yes, kind of sir. going in and out at all? No, they, they're coming and they're staying. Okay. Um, yeah, their main... Attraction is to be unplugged and connected to nature so people aren't going into town. Um, they're hanging out okay. in the field. Thanks. 
you made a comment that you were would meet all of the Davidson County requirements for waste removal, for mm -hmm. lack of a better term. Uh, and I guess that would also include trash. Is this going to be septic? I assume it's a septic area. Yes, it's sir. A pretty big, large area. Yes, sir. Uh, what's your water coming into it? Uh, I mean, if have, have you got, you'll be on city water. It Metro Water serves the property. It does. Um, okay. cu currently, there's not gravity sewer to the property, so we're going to be working with the health department um, to to establish the right way to have a septic field. Uh, and she is heavy into composting. Um, her current location, I'm, I know you generate very little trash. Yeah. Um, but you also use compostable toilet. Yep. And, yeah, compostable toilets and biodegradable soaps and things like that for gray water. Um, but, yes, we generate very little trash. And, and right now, because Bloomsbury Farm is an organic farm, I can't – I have to take my compost off-site, but I plan to integrate um, – heavy composting in, in this, uh, in this operation. Um, like all my, um, well, I don't have, um, paper plates or anything like that. I have dishes that get washed, but what little trash we do, um, accumulate will be disposed of properly. And then I also have a separate composting bin for each camper and plan to continue to do that. Okay. And she'll provide shampoo and toiletries, um, that are earth friendly and biodegradable. So you can't bring your own that might be harmful. Okay. And then uh, what about animals, pets? I'm thinking more domesticated types, mm. not the, the wild coyotes that I'm sure that are out there <laughs> somewhere or, or the what have you. Help me with that a little, just a little bit. Yeah, right now I'm actually testing a pet policy and my we actually just opened one camper to allow dogs in um, last weekend, and I'm not sure I'm going to continue with that policy just because <laughs> it's hard to clean after uh, there's dog care everywhere. So um, I am right now leaning towards not allowing pets. <sighs> You're welcome. All right. Uh, other other questions for the applicant at this point? Uh, one standard procedure question. If, if someone's here in support of us, do they come and speak now in our 10 minutes, or are they separate? It's, I'm sorry, what now? But there was somebody in support of us. Uh, so that would be part of your time, and you have three minutes and 45 seconds, and so some of that you'll want to, uh, well, I'd, you certainly may reserve some of that for rebuttal. If you run out of time, then we, the board would have to decide uh, what time to allow. Uh, but, yeah, so if you have someone that wants to speak and, and use up a few, um, a, a little bit of your time, that's certainly fine, and that would be best to do it now. Um, we mainly want to just acknowledge that one of the abutting neighbors is here in support. Okay, that's fine, and, and that neighbor can come, and if you'd like, and state, and basically just say, state their name and say where they live and that they support, if that's what you'd like to have on the record, if they choose to do that. Oh, there she is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you'd like to come up and say a few words. Parenting duty. Call <laughs> All right, yeah, ma'am, if you would just state your name and address and. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, my name is Julie Wall, and I live at 20, 2145 Shaw Road. Uh, we have about 124 acres there, and our property runs right up against um, the north end of the one in question. So, do, so you're to the side uh, of the property, or where do, where do you all touch at the side? Is that your property that's right below? Uh, directly below. Directly below, okay. So on the corner there, Shaw and Lichten, yes, sir. Is that, okay. And so, and so you support the project? Actually, I do support the project. Um, 
I purchased land in the area in part to preserve the landscape, the wildlife, um, the water conservation is extremely important to me. I plan to put an environmental lien on my property so that no development may be done for the next hundred years after I am gone. Um, so when I first heard about it and heard that a developer had bought the land, the word developer kind of, you know, like, like most people in White's Creek kind of like gives me the eebie-jeebies. But having looked over her particular project um, and how environmentally responsible she has been in the past, um, I believe that sh her stewardship of the land would be excellent um, and would be, if, if nothing else, preferable to a lot of other options that will certainly come down the line if she's denied. So I am very much in favor. Okay, thank you. Any other, any questions? This person. I had a, uh, just quick question in general. You provided images um, of the impermanent structures. And in one of these images, it looks like the tents are on, I guess, permanent like platforms and stairs? Yes, sir. So is that the, I guess, the intent to build platforms for these glamping? As opposed to grading, yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Any other questions at this point? All right. Do you have anything else to add before we hear from the opposition? No, sir. All right. You'll have two minutes and 37 seconds for rebuttal. Thank you. And the opposition, uh, you have 10 minutes in total. And so if you have uh, designated someone that is a spokesperson for the group or if you want to each come up and take some time, but it's, again, 10 minutes total and we're happy to hear from everybody who uh, can and wants to speak within that time frame. And of course, as, as always, if, if the board asks a question, that doesn't uh, count against your time uh, to respond to that. Yes, ma'am, you're Super free to come. Or That's fine, or you, yeah. I can't say okay. Yeah. Anyone else? And again, when, when it's your turn, just uh, if you'd state your name and your address and why you're opposed to this uh, project. My name is Peggy Paul. I live at 2070 Shaw Road, three driveways down from the proposed development. I've lived in my house on five acres for the past 26 years. My Shaw Road neighbors and I oppose this development for many reasons. Ms. Wolf did host a Zoom call last week to explain her proposed development and address any concerns that we local residents might have. Several dozen property owners were on that call. Unfortunately, not all of them could attend today. We understand the idea of civilized camping in a rural setting and how inviting that might sound to some city dwellers. But this is not just the middle of nowhere. This is our home. We do not want to lose our ability to, jo to enjoy our beautiful rural outdoors so some others can come here and potentially disrupt our peaceful, quiet way of life. We feel this proposed development would negatively impact our property values. We are concerned about the noise that so many additional people would bring, the additional traffic on our tiny two-lane road, disruption of the wildlife in the area, and many other unknowns. Ms. Wolf said her glamping clients would support local small business as if that would be a consolation or a plus for the existing property owners. With the exception of Galbraith's Market on Licton Pike and several gas stations at the interstate, there are no local small businesses to support. This is the country and we like it that way. We don't deny that the proposed development sounds enticing to some. We just don't want it in our backyard on Shaw Road. Thank you. Okay. My name is Charlene Hosey. Ma'am, if you would just, I'm sorry, if you would Microphone. just press the, press the button there, make sure the red light's on, and that way we can hear you. There you go. My name is Charlene Hosey. I live at 2034 Shaw Road. We are a rural, residential, and farming community. One house may be built to codes and no less than five acres. I don't want a business where 80 or more people, tourists, are coming in every night and staying in our neighborhood. Looking ahead, in 5, 10, 30 years, it is frightening to imagine the use of 40 abandoned shelters located up in our woods. I am a widow living alone. There is very poor cell service in our area. Any of those 80 strangers that have an emergency or simply need directions 
are going to be coming and knocking on our doors. It would be really scary to have strangers coming up to my house in the middle of the day, especially at 3 a.m. in the morning. As a side, Erin is currently provides alcohol to her guests as part of their greeting. That concerns me. I don't know if she needs or has a liquor license for this in her current status. Obviously, I don't normally have a red face. I'm going to be just. Yeah, and uh, uh, I'm sorry, ma'am, if you would cut yours off oh. and then, wait, yeah, cut it off again. And then, ma'am, before you speak, if you would just state your name and address. Who's and then, talking? <laughs> I can't even see your face. Name and address first, Martha. My name's Martha Morgan. I live at 2058 Shaw Road. I know there are other people that would like to get in on this. It'll take me one minute. I don't normally have a red face. I'm torn up. I've been sick since I've heard about it. I live right across the street. The red sign is right by my mailbox. I sit on my porch every day. I've been out there 43 years. And I look out at that hillside, that beautiful hillside where she said a dilapidated building is, is uh, my friend's property. And she, I guess she had to sell. I don't know. But um, it, it tears me up. I'm real worried about security. I, too, live up just where it would be people coming to our house a lot. It could be. I'm worried about the septic system. We've never had anything but septic tanks. And a bathhouse and all the dumping that motorhomes do, I don't know if that'll happen. I'm sure you're a great person and it sounds real earthy and wonderful, but not right across the street from my house. I've been out there. I don't want my property value to go, out, go, go down. And I'm just really pretty sick about it, y'all. And I think y'all would be probably if you lived out there. And um, that's it. Come on, somebody else. I have, a, I have a question for you, and, and you can... Um, Who is that? Right here. Oh, ma'am. Right here. I have a question, and, and it stopped your time, so... Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> thanks for letting me have some time. Mm -hmm. um, press, your, press your button again so you back on. There you go. So when you look out, um, you said you look out and you see the property, and you see... What do you see now? Can you tell us? I see exactly house? where they're going to put the campground. I sit on my porch every day. It's my most favorite time of the day. And, and what's there now? You said there's a house there and is there a lot of trees there's a real old house up the drive mm -hmm. and it's where sherry's uh, parents used to live and it is dilapidated it'll have to be torn down i'm hoping somebody will buy the property and put a house in horses were there for years that's what it is a farm property and uh, so that's what i see is just the hillside okay so i don't houses. even see the dilapidated house it's way up there Okay, so you see a house and... I don't see the house. I just see, see trees. You see trees. Thank you. It's great. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions? All right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name's David Meadows. I live at 5140 Lichten Pike, which is right around the corner from Shaw Road. Um, my main concerns is traffic on the road. We're a thoroughfare for Union Hill Racetrack up in the Jolton area. So we already have on weekends large car haulers and trailers and big trucks and stuff coming down our road going to the racetrack that we deal with. It's a cut through for people getting off work in the evenings, especially when the interstates back up. I made it down to this week, uh, one day from down Licton Pike to where it drops off on Dickerson Road, and there was 25 cars backed up waiting to turn onto Dickerson Road where they've cut through the back, through the hills and everything up in that area. For the Zoom meeting, they, uh, Aaron said they would start with probably 40 campers and 20 tents. Start with, how many more does it mushroom into before this is blown up across the whole track? Uh, we don't have the, the space. Our roads are deteriorating with no signs of, of having anything fixed. I mean, we got potholes that, that can swallow a small car up in this area right now. So I'll let someone else talk. Or hey there. My name is Scott Clausing. Uh, my wife and I just finished building our, our home together. Uh, we were just, just married, um, just in the the top right corner there adjoining the property. And um, I, I think let the other neighbors talk about the, the particular impact to their, their lifestyle. I would like to bring to the board's attention that no um, hardship has been articulated at all. 
and the purpose of the special exemption is to alleviate a hardship for the community to come around a neighbor and alleviate a hardship. There is none. Um, this is a desire for a commercial developer to use a property that they basically stole away from a, a local resident who was in financial trouble to operate a business without on a residential lot without a residence, with no intention of building a residence. And the simple fact of building this infrastructure, if Aaron's business were to fail, that infrastructure being in place and the investment that developer made would constitute a real hardship moving forward. And we're worried about what that might bring and in the event that this campsite moves away. Thank you. We should probably clarify that this is a special exception and a hardship's not required to be proven. The application that was submitted requires a hardship to be defined and defended. Uh, Mr. Hargis, can you yeah. clarify? No, I'll be happy to clarify. The special exception uses under the zoning code, that is true of variances when you're asking to do, to get a waiver or, or a, a stripping away of what the zoning code requires. This uses a special exception so that the applicant has to show compliance with the provisions underneath campsite. They, they don't have to show a hardship in, in this case. It's, they have to show compliance with the regulations as listed. The, in, in that case, the paperwork that was submitted and that all of us have had access to is extremely misleading because the application that was submitted requires a hardship. Um, if what is being requested here is the ability to use a residential property for a commercial purpose because a person with access and you know the ability to, to push that through is trying to wield that, I think that that's very inappropriate and damaging to our neighborhood. Kind of for, for clarity for everyone here, special exception uses are, and they may be commercial uses, uh, in residential settings that the Metro Council has spelled out that, that they are allowed to be in uh, by getting approval of this board and, and the applicant showing compliance with those requirements underneath the code. Um, doesn't rezone the property, um, but it does it does allow potentially for uses that otherwise you wouldn't think of in a residential setting. Daycare centers for one would be one. This use camp is one. Um, churches in, in residential areas are also one, but um, at least nothing I, I've got here. This, this is just a straight special exception. Um, no variance is being asked for. I will note for the applicant, the site plan shows a gravel parking lot that will have to be paved. Um, we would not permit uh, gravel for parking, uh, both under the building code or the zoning code. But. I'm James Jennings, I'm of 4490 Brick Church Pike. I have 50 acres that butt up against this property, this uh, this said property that they want to put this thing on. Now, I hate standing in anybody's way of doing what they want to do, but this is not applicable. Nobody in the neighborhood wants this. Uh, the septic system that I keep hearing people talk about, that's gonna cost thousands and thousands of dollars to put that thing in, to make it to where people can do what they need to do up there. They gotta run water in, they got to run electricity in. It costs a lot of money. We asked her the other night, your finances, none of your business. Okay, well that goes along with a decision on what we're gonna do, or what they're trying to do. What I think is, is what is applicable to this whole thing is, if these people want to come in, clear the land, clean it up, bring in cans, tear the house down, tear the barn down, clean it up, submit a plot plan for a house, a home, build a very nice house like this gentleman has right here. That is our campsites, our homes. We don't want this in our backyard. Would you want it in your backyard? I don't know what's gonna happen down there. I'm sure she has good intentions, but I'm 
done. All right, thank you. Any any questions? My name is Tim Coates. I live at uh, 2064 Shaw Road, right across the, the street from this proposal. Um, <clears throat> if you look at Bloomsbury Farm, where she currently is, 400 acres, three residences on 400 acres. If you look, she's got, that's 54 acres, I think is what she's got. So if you expand out to what 400 acres looks like, you got a lot of residences around there. Of course, she's not bothering anybody on 400 acres with three residences, but there's a potential that she's going to be bothering people. And I think you can see by the number of people that are against it and the one person that's for it, we just don't, we don't need it out there. She needs to get a bigger place, find a bigger spot to put this thing because it's just going to be, you know, it, it's, it's, it's not good. She's talking about 40 uh, campsites, 40 campers, whatever. She's going to have a pavilion. She's going to have a bathhouse with toilets. So 40 campsites, whatever, that's 80 people. She's got to have plumbing for 80 people. Not everybody wants to use a composting toilet. Some people want to go use a real toilet. So the septic system, I think, is going to be a big, a big deal because I've got five acres with four bedrooms, and I'm done. They won't, I can't put any more bathrooms or bedrooms or anything in my house. So I think we need to look at this really seriously and just realize that you've got so many people here against this, I just don't think, uh, and plus, down the road, if she doesn't do well, you've got all this quarter of a million dollar infrastructure that's going in, the, the property owner's going to want to do something, or the investor's going to want to do something to recoup this money. Aaron, all her intentions, I think, are well and good, but the next person coming along, we have no idea what they're going to, what they're going to want to do with that place. And all of a sudden, we're stuck with whatever ends up being there. So that's all I've got to say. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right, I believe our time is up. Oh, I, got, I got one more thing. Does the board have objections to adding one minute to the time and then adding that to the... All right, sir. Uh, there'll okay. be one, one minute. It's going to be a hard minute. Um, and then the applicant will have it. before then. I'm sorry. No, you, you're, you're welcome. You, you got, y'all have a minute to say your piece. And then, sir, you tell us what you had to say. Okay, in her Zoom meeting she had, we were told there would not be any on-site management through the evening hours. So that really concerns me because there's no one to go to other than trying to call Metro to get out there, which everyone knows they're bogged down enough right now. I'm done. <laughs> yeah, ma'am, if you would press the, yeah, press the button and then state your name, address, and what you had to say. Yes, Marty Hartman, 5471 Lichten Pike. I agree with everything David had said uh, previous to that. Um, my concern is she's doing 26 parking spots for 40 campsites. Are, are we running Ubers in, buses? How are we going to have enough parking for all of these people? And that's assuming that only there's only one car per campsite, and I don't think that's a safe assumption. Say you're having a girlfriend's weekend and you're meeting somewhere in the middle, you're both driving in. Um, so that's going to be a lot of extra cars on the road. I live on Licton Pike. As David said, it's impossible to even go to the mailbox in the afternoons without getting run over by all the cars. Um, and the other thing is the septic. If we assume two people per campsite, each one accommodates three to four guests, that's 80 showers a day and who knows how many flushes. And I'm just wondering if anybody has done an environmental impact study. But um, I, I just worry. I've lived out there my whole entire life and I hate to see us get to the point where we're going to get commercialized and lose our way of life. And once the camel gets his head in the tent, the rest of him may follow. Union Hill Racetrack came in 63 years ago um, when the residents voted on whether or not to let that come. They were told two nights a week. Now it's up to three and four nights. We've got nitro cars, four wheelers, motorcycles, um, and people pull in those large car haulers through. They come in, they spend the night. Um, they are drag racing on our street. I saw them last week in broad daylight. So I am concerned about the impact of the traffic. And Shaw Road doesn't even have shoulders on the road. 
right. it is not meant for that kind of traffic. It's small and windy. My children went to school in the area, and I actually made them go out a different way to get to their school because that road is so windy. All right, thank you, ma'am. We're out of time, but I'm asking if any, so you've been here a long time, and if there are any questions um, about the neighborhood or impact, then I'll ask the board, but otherwise we, we've, we've run over, um, run over our time. All right, thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right, so then uh, the applicant can come back, and I think we'll have three minutes and 37 seconds now for uh, rebuttal. So uh, on a, just a, a quick question before you start your rebuttal that, you know, one of the things that the board uh, may ask, uh, I don't know that it's required, but we, we may ask is a, a traffic study. And on the surface, it sounds like 26 cars on a, maybe a day on a, a rural road uh, wouldn't have that type of impact, but it sounds like from the neighbors that, that it already is a crowded road. Uh, is there a reason, uh, tell me what your thoughts are on um, the impact on, on existing traffic on that road? Um, I, I th as an engineer, I think that's a negligible impact to have 26 additional vehicles. Um, but we can have a traffic engineer who specializes in that run a study is one of the conditions of approval. Okay. And, and then uh, feel free to I'm sorry, I asked a question before your, your rebuttal, but the floor is yours to discuss what you heard from the opposition. Um, I'm going to let Aaron respond to most of them, but I wanted to point out it's difficult to see on the site plan. The reason that the campgrounds are laid out the way they are, there's a stream that runs along the front of the property, and there's an existing crossing that we were going to shift down to the middle of the property. The clock is not running. No, the clock's not running. And it has, um, it has several trees that line on both sides of it. And so someone made the comment about not being able to see the existing house. Yeah. I don't think that they'll be able to see much of the proposed infrastructure either, uh, except for the crossing. So it, it should be pretty heavily screened. Okay. And, and that, I think, the, and, and, and the, the clock should be going. And, and like I said, we'll, we'll manage that. Um, because it, we did stop the question and ask them for a rebuttal, but so if, I'm sorry. So you, you continue with your. That, that's fine if you want to run it to three minutes, and then I'll let. No, it's, it. We'll 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 look at it, and if I know we're going to hear from. But anyway, okay. ma'am, go ahead. Um, there are some it, concerns about abandonment. If I fail and this infrastructure is left, 90% um, of what is going on the property is mobile um, and movable. Um, there's concern about strangers and, and property management and the gentleman that mentioned that there wasn't going to be 24 hours on site. Um, I just want to clarify that that is true in a phase one when I'm not utilizing all 40 sites. Um, that my property manager would be on site till 11 o'clock at night, and then that's how we run it right now. Um, we're on site until 10 or 11 at night, and then we have a person that's on call 20, like overnight that answers the phone and comes out if there's an emergency, and so that was, I explained that as a phase one. Later phase when there's 40 sites, we would definitely have 24 hour on site management. Um, security concerns, um, we're planning to have a gate, again, a property manager on site most of the time, and potentially surveillance. Um, again, on the screening, there's heavily, oh, heavily wooded um, line along this, the, the road that we're not planning to tear down except to build the road um, to access into the property. Um, the questions about um, alcohol. Um, I provide a welcome cocktail from um, a local distillery, Pennington Distillery, that is included in the stay. I'm not selling it to guests, so I don't need a liquor license. And then I also um, confirm the age of my guests before they check in, which is what is required. Um, 
I, I have a question on that. Yeah. Do, you, do you allow guests to bring their own alcohol on the property? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Quick question. Um, how did you all get to the 26 parking spaces? How did you come to that calculation for 40 uh, campsites? Uh, that's what we were showing initially, just because of what was reasonable to fit without building a sprawling parking lot. So we were going to have need to work with the traffic uh, with, with the traffic engineer and the city engineer to determine what's the appropriate count. Um, obviously, parking will dictate how many people she can have there. And so if, if there's more people coming than parking spaces, then it may be a situation where she has to find a way to pay for somebody to take an Uber, or, you know, f figure out a ride sharing opportunity because there's nowhere outside of that parking lot for a vehicle to be. So there's no intent to, to put a car on Shaw Road um, or to put a car elsewhere. But with the small volume of uh, people coming, that, that's easier for her to manage. How do you anticipate a small volume of people if the proposal is seeking 40 campsites? Like, I just want to know how you correlate it, because 40 sites doesn't seem like a small amount of people to me. Let's say I just average it out two people per site. That's 80 people. So I'm just asking, no, like I'm asking, I'm not stating, like, how did you come up with it'll be a small volume of people? Well, I... I think there's two components to that. One is we're thinking about rolling out sites in phases. So in phase one, realistically, I think I'll probably have 10 to 15 sites up and running. Um, and then I lost my train of thought. If it's successful, then you would continue. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, and then also that 80 people is assuming occupancy is at 100%, which I would love, but um, it, that's just not how it goes. Occupancy can range from 50 to 70%, so. What, what length is your average stay at your current site? Um, I'd say probably two nights. Um, it ranges from one to three. Okay. I would say that's the bulk of the average length. Yeah, busiest obviously on weekends, but sprinkles throughout the week. Um, I've got a series of questions. You may or may not be able to answer them, but uh, let's go to the gate and fencing around the property. Are you going to fence around the property in addition to gating it? No, sir. I wasn't planning to fence the whole perimeter, but depending on in the back of the property where trails that intersect between property lines, it might make sense to build fencing around that. Um, and then signage as well. Okay. Well, just based on that, how do you, because obviously you've got a few people here that aren't exactly thrilled with what you're proposing, and uh, how are you going to avoid having say one of your neighbors starts suing you for, for permitting trespass or things, minor matters such as that. I mean, people sort of get upset when folks start traipsing onto somebody else's property. And please don't understand, don't, don't take my questions as already having made a decision one way or the other. I'm still listening as Shanti usually tells me, <clears throat> I haven't made my mind up yet, but I just need some answers because I don't know if I would like some of your guests perhaps traipsing across my area mm -hmm. uh, in, in my yard. So I'm, I'm just trying to understand that part of it. How are you going to keep that? Yes, sir. Um, the way that I handle it now is um, clear communication to guests on the areas that they have access to. Um, you know, Bloomsbury Farm is a fully operational organic farm, um, and they have, you know, rules with me where guests can go and where guests can't go. And so that's in writing and people um, agree to that before coming. And then also we verbally reinforce that when we greet guests. And so honestly, with the at least the type of people that have been coming to date, providing the rules and, and uh, verbally reinforcing the most important ones has been able to manage that. Okay. Wait, ma'am, I got 
I'll, I'll, okay. Um, can, can I get the picture of the road frontage back up there, please? Thank you. Um, we've already had some testimony today where people are talking cell coverage is not exactly superior, shall we say, and that emergency traffic issues if someone gets hurt back there. Mm -hmm. How are you going to address some of those issues? Like if, say someone gets hurt, mm -hmm. say, you know, I stumble out of my, my tent or my, my, uh, where I'm staying and I break my leg, I would really like to have someone take me to a hospital pretty damn quick. And if my cell phone doesn't work, and you're not providing that type of service, say I stumble out at midnight, so to speak, and I don't have a site person there and nobody can get cell service. That's With all due respect, Councilwoman, uh, that, that's, that's pretty small and, and, and I'm concerned how do you, I mean your insurance carrier obviously would like you to have a nice wide road and be able to get people in and out and be able to provide that type of service. Have you at least addressed that concept? So your concern, I'm sorry. Well, your guests are going to run You're concerned risk. that for people that don't have self-service, yeah. that they're well, not I mean, going to be able to get You're the out there camping. Yeah. And, and uh, sir, absolutely. Hey, we're not, everybody's had their chance to speak and you're not going to speak unless you're called on, please, or you're not going to be able to stay in the room. Uh, so ma'am, you have a question about, um, Safety. About safety, safety, safety and security, which was raised by the opposition. So I hope the opposition appreciates that we are asking direct questions to issues that you've raised. And ma'am, you have a chance to answer that. Yeah. So if I'm interpreting right, you're concerned about a situation where somebody's cell phone service isn't operating correctly and being able to get the help they need. Um, I think that's a, a good point. And I think the only solution that I can have for that is to install maybe a landline in the pavilion area in the common area. Okay. So at least you you have thought about it a little bit, and okay. Um, you're not going to have any farming activities up there, are you? Uh, no, sir. Okay. You're. Oh, okay. I mean, I have thought about maybe having a community garden or something like that, but. Okay. And now, cooking. Folks are going to be cooking up in there when they're staying there, and there's going to be food and. You're going to have all sorts of smells floating around that may be good, may not so much. Um, have you already come up with rules and regulations to sort of, because you're not going to make everybody that's here happy ever, obviously. So how are you going to eliminate that? Sure. Uh, there's, I was planning on using um, the bear proof um, trash can containers like they have at state parks and those will be scattered um, around grounds. Okay. If your request was positively looked at by this body with a condition that there was some type of for a period of years and I don't know if we can do this and I'm going to look over at Joey here in a second when I ask my question if there was a requirement to have some type of bond or security or something like that, that if you fail in your business opportunity, that it would be, it would revert back to what it was cleaned up, get rid of the, the, the dwellings that may or may not be there, removed, the human habitation, so to speak, uh, if, and I, I would have no clue whether we can A, require something like that, and, and B, whether you would be willing to do it and the cost of it for I a mean, period of years. I can speak to at least, maybe not the pavilion structure, but to the campers and the tent sites. Part of why I like the business that I have built is that they're movable and sellable. There's a big market for the campers that I've, I've built. I'm confident that I could res resell them. Um, so as a fairly risk averse person, this business model felt relatively safe because of that reason. So 
whether or not we need to put that in some sort of legal writing, um, all of the dwelling structures, I can say my fallback plan if I fail would be to either move them somewhere else or to sell them. Uh, well, you said dwelling structures, and that brings the question that Mr. Cole brought up earlier. There were some pictures of tents that were on platforms, and there were some campers. What what are you looking at doing with that? Both of those things. Okay. How many of each, approximately? Like, twenty and twenty. But okay. Yeah, in the in the full um, evolution of the of okay. the plan. So would the the camp the tents that are on the structures would you be good with removing those structures as well? They're sitting on the platforms and all that kind of stuff. I think if that was a requirement, then potentially we might want to change the plan and grade where they sit so that we're not investing in something that we'll have to tear down. But okay. I'm I'm open to discuss those kind of things. Okay. Any other questions at this point? I do. Um, the 7,600 square foot shelter, I know it, it has a bathhouse in it. And, and what else is in that shelter? Um, storage area for supplies and things like that. But the bulk of it would be a picnic table, common gathering space. Um, one of my pain points right now is that I don't have space for guests to gather during in inclement weather. Um, so that would be the primary purpose of it. Will there be any kind of kitchen in that, that space? No, sir. Okay. Any other questions? We might have a sink um, so that I can wash things in there, but no, like, full kitchen. Any other questions from the board at this point? Did you all have anything else to add? Okay. Uh, thank you. And Council Lady Gamble. have that. Hello, everyone. Thank you uh, for your service and for your time today. Forgive me if I sound a little melancholy. I just left a funeral of a, the daughter of a good friend of mine. So, I, But I wanted to be here to uh, express kind of what I've heard from the community and also my own personal uh, concerns about this particular development. I did speak with Ms. Wolf and I do appreciate her uh, interest in, in coming into uh, this area uh, to, to have this business. I do appreciate her uh, communicating with the community or, or engaging the community in her, in her vision and idea. Uh, however, I, I have received quite a few or several uh, emails from community members in opposition. Uh, to the to the project with some some valid concerns I you know on the surface this project seems like it would be low impact uh, on the community however in listening to some of the community concerns some of those concerns have have come to my attention as well and the fact that we are thinking about have allowing a commercial business really in a residential area in this AR 2a, uh, uh, zoning is, is concerning, and, I'm, I'm, and I think that may be something that we need to look at uh, going forward. Uh, but as it relates to this particular project, I, I think uh, this kind of commercial business uh, in this, I have concerns, I guess, about this kind of commercial business in this residential area. For one, there's not a fixed uh, residence, uh, so that so the property owner actually won't be living on the property, uh, and and you all have brought up a lot of issues that I've been thinking about too. There's there's no kitchen, there's no uh, a facility, place, a shelter for people to go. There, you may have a phone, but I mean, is the phone where's the phone? Where's the landline going to be? Because there's no fixed structure, residential structure that concerns me. Also, traffic. Um, traffic is a big issue on Shaw Road. Shaw Road is a windy road. It is a two-lane road, and it, it needs upgrades that we need to do uh, at, to our city government, but that's another story. But I don't, I'm, not, I'm worried that um, 
that this commercial business on this road, that we don't have the infrastructure to support it. And also the amount of people that will be utilizing uh, the business in an uncontrolled area. I mean, they're outside, it's really uncontrolled, and that kind of concerns me as well, since it, it will be in a residential area. And then fourth, trash. Uh, we, um, we have a huge trash problem, people dumping things, and, and while I do appreciate and, and, and uh, feel that Ms. Wolf would to her best of her ability, try to maintain that. That 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 is uh, an issue or concern that I have that we may have by allowing uh, this type of this type of commercial business that is outside that is uncontrolled uh, that we may have problems problems doing that. So I, I think you know maybe there's a solution. Maybe she can do some things to address these four concerns that I've raised and some of the concerns that you all have raised today, but, you know, and maybe we need more time for that process to happen, but but as it stands today, I, I, I think that this is something that may not be uh, the best fit for the community as it is proposed today. So, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Council Lady. Uh, Ma'am, I don't know, but there were there questions for the council lady. Do you all have questions? Wait, I, I, I do. I, I just you had mentioned that um, that you know that, that you needed you thought it, at best you need more time and 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 I know it's a tough day for you and I, I'm sorry that I appreciate you coming uh, for that and I'm sorry uh, to hear about your friend's daughter. Um, but if we were to defer this and give more time to, to address this, um, you know, with traffic and trash, I mean, is there, do you think there's a path for them to have something that might be acceptable to you and the, and the neighbors, or is that? Well, I, I, I don't know that that's been explored, right. and and I've asked uh, several of the neighbors who sent me emails if they if they thought something could be done to the project to make it more agreeable, and I really didn't get a response to okay. that. But you know, so I, I don't know that there will be anything that ever make it where it's people want it, but these concerns that have been raised are valid, and if there was something, like if she was going to build a, a an actual structure, a residence, and, and then maybe try to uh, use the business, I think somebody mentioned that this AR2A allows for daycare or a church or something like that, or a retreat. I, I, we have a, a, a farm in our, um, a horse farm, you know, not far from here on Brick Church Pike, where the resident uh, used the AR2A to uh, buy the property and establish a, a horse farm, uh, but they have a residence on the on the uh, property that they will live in and maintain the horse farm. So it so there there may be a way to make it uh, where it's more suitable. Uh, and I don't know that that's been explored, and I don't know if that's the interest of the owner. Uh, but I just brought that, uh, made that point as to um, if there was more time, maybe it could be. Okay. All right. Thank you. Are there any other questions for the council lady? All right. Thanks. Thanks again for coming. Thank you. Uh, did you have a question? Well, I, oh yes. I, uh, Councilwoman, I'm, I'm just going to assume that this property or this particular road is not very high on the county's list to repay well, and improve. Well, it is a GSD and, <laughs> yeah, I, yes. But but I did pass my card off because we can at least for the fix those potholes. We, yeah, we can do gonna, that now. That would so probably please. help a few people. <laughs> okay, well, I'll talk to, I'll talk right. to them about that to get that problem fixed, but yeah. Thank you, ma'am. All right. Any other questions from the board? All right, thank you so much for being here. Right, thank much you. appreciated. All right, and with that, uh, we will close the public hearing and uh, and discuss. Uh, and I'm sorry. No, go ahead, Mr. Chairman. Well, no, I, I didn't. This was more of a uh, procedural, it, just to help. I know a lot of people are out uh, with us today that uh, 
aren't used to our board and and what the differences are between a variance and a special exception and all that kind of thing and it took me a while being on this board to know that difference uh, but the special exception is here to us uh, because it, a, a camp is allowed in this district but it has to meet certain criteria in order for us to approve it, and that's what we're reviewing today, is whether or not th this use uh, is appropriate um, for this space, given the criteria that we have. And so, you know, it, it is different in that it doesn't require hardship. They're not asking for a variance of any type. They will have to uh, fully comply with the zoning code, but what they're asking for is a special exception. And, and that's why you may have a, a different discussion than you might hear on other types of cases. But Ms. Davis. Uh, no, um, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for that background, because I think it's always good to be reminded. And since I've been on this board, we've had several sort of similar cases like this. And I know just with the special exception, there's sort of a general criteria, and then there's a specific criteria. So we kind of have two criteria that we get to look at when we assess these. and. I'm so thankful um, that the council member was able to be with us. Um, I know it's probably very difficult for her to do that because she said something that I was sort of thinking while I was listening to the presentation was, what about infrastructure? Because this is a very, just from the picture, it's a very small kind of country road. It's a <laughs> rural, re rural residential area. And I think, um, what the applicant is currently doing, it kind of works because it's sort of a smaller footprint and this is sort of an expansion of that. But it is sort of, if you think about, excuse me, if you think about it, if we approve this, that's 40 sites. That's sort of like a small hotel, if we're being honest. And it, I'm not saying that I don't think that there's a path for approval, because I actually do think that there's a path for approval. I don't know if everybody would be happy, but I do think that there's been enough evidence of like sort of the infrastructure, the sewer, the water, the road. There's a lot of stuff that, you know, I think if this was a smaller footprint, like if this was a smaller business, maybe it could go forward. But I think what I'm a little uncomfortable with is sort of approving 40 in this particular spot. Because I think, yes, right now you're not at full capacity, but eventually you will be and this area is not going to change because it wasn't really designed. When it was designed, it wasn't designed for that sort of activity. So that's what I'm initially thinking. But as Mr. Lawless said, I'm still listening and I'm open to what other people have to say. Mr. Lawless. Well, I've listened. I've also listened to the, 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 the folks out there and the, the, the council member helped a bunch, uh, at least cleared up how long it might be before the road gets built. Um, that being said, the communication between the developer and the, and the neighborhood, there's got to be some middle ground somewhere. I'm incredibly concerned about the infrastructure, uh, the safety of the people. Camping sounds like a wonderful thing, but you can really get yourself hurt. Uh, there are some pretty strong feelings about trespass, which is, from, from my standpoint, you know, I've got a number of acres and I fenced myself in and I didn't pick up a, a, uh, a feeling from the applicant that they wanted to do that. Yeah, it's expensive, but this is an upscale type of place, or so they're saying, that they want to have, but you've got you know, you can get walking around and get lost real quick. And, and frankly, if you're traipsing around someone's house or someone's backyard, you may end up, you may end up not liking the results you're going to get. So if they were to defer it and maybe have a few more community meetings, yeah. I'd feel a whole lot happier about it if I could make that suggestion. Well, and, and, and I, th I think that may be, uh, where things are headed. Um, because I think there are uh, enough concerns, um, you know. The you know, it, you, when when I look at the the proposal, um, there, there's um, part of me says, you know, if this thing was here, had been here 40 years, it would be a community gym. But but actually proposing something and creating something is 
concerning, you know, and, and meaning that I think if it's if it was there, if it was established and running like it, it might, then then it might be a really good thing. Uh, but I understand the community's concern about it because it's brand new, it's not proven, and it has a lot of uh, concerns that uh, that come with it. You know, the another uh, element of of uh, Special exceptions are that we, uh, the planning department, uh, makes a recommendation, and in this case, uh, they, the, the, and the planning department uh, doesn't always uh, take in community input because they don't have that opportunity, and they're looking at it uh, from a perspective of what is the the size of the lot, where is it, uh, what is the use, and and their criteria doesn't. Uh, include community uh, opinion uh, in their recommendation. So it's, uh, and, and that's just saying that because th they recommended that we approve it, which means that they say it's appropriate uh, for this area. But one of the things that they did mention in their uh, recommendation was that, you know, it's uh, the type of development that would preserve the conservation, you know, policy of the area for that uh, specifically as it relates to that site, which I think is important. And I think that the applicant has shown a willingness for that. So to me, there's there are a lot of positive elements to what uh, the applicant wants to do with this land, but I agree with my fellow commissioners that there's still uh, too many unanswered uh, questions. And I believe that catch-all category of, of impact. Uh, there may be a few other of the specific criteria for uh, a campground, which I think is it's recreation entertainment special exceptions, um, that we might want to have additional information on too. I mean, we talked about the traffic study. I think that goes to the infrastructure, um, not only the impact of, of the potential cars coming and going, but also um, what is the plan for you know emergency uh, situations, and then. There, I, there. I think there was some concern expressed about um, whether you know the all of the uh, the site plan was adequate. Is that what what were you I know that you were thinking that there were maybe some site plan uh, additional information because really all we have are, you know we have kind of little dots and I guess we have a, a the size of the pavilion. But if there was any additional information there. Uh, We'd probably need to know that, but you know, it, it seems like they meet the lot size, they meet the setback. Uh, buffer yard is something that they would have to do before they uh, got their permit, and that's not. Some, I mean, they're not asking for a variance there. Uh, traffic, we have concerns about parking. Uh, there was some concern about parking in terms of uh, if they have 80 uh, site or 40 sites and, and and not enough parking, then where does that go? And it clearly can't go on Shaw Road based on uh, the pictures of the road. So I'm not, I'm not convinced that they've met or, or, or satisfied the specific conditions. Uh, and then the generic conditions of, of community impact, I think, have some issues. So, But I do think there is a possible path for them. And so usually in those cases, we defer a length of time that's acceptable. and. Ask them to go back and work with the council person and the neighborhood. Um, it's clear that some of the neighbors aren't going to uh, ever go for it, and that's understandable. Um, and and they may not. Uh, the applicant may not ever meet, meet the criteria. But if they do meet, ultimately meet the criteria, then I think we want to be considerate of as many of those issues as we can. That's a lot to say. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Chairman, can I? Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, Mr. I, I like you. I, I have some concerns, particularly over the site plan, and and has mentioned the number of spaces. And I mean, uh, it seems like the development activity is uh, concentrated up close to the front of the site, where many of these people have spoken to us are most impacted by it. And um, there, there's a back 40, if you will, that, that is not, and I, I realize the slope and topography may have part of that, and cost has part of that. That, but yeah, have, I mean, if if you if this is not going to be enough uh, parking, then that will pretty significantly impact that site plan. Um, 
a 7,600 square foot structure is not a small structure either there. Um, much larger than a house that might go there otherwise. Depends on how, how big a house you want to build. But um, I also have concern, as some of the neighbors have mentioned, over um, lack of cell coverage in the area. I mean, I know that you know maybe that's something they could work out to, to bring cell coverage to the area on, on their property. Um, I don't know. Or I think you know probably a better solution would be to um, have have somebody there. You know. All night. Um, that that seems like a, a pretty big sticking issue. So um, I agree. There, there's still there's still so much uh, that should probably be worked through before you know this this goes forward. If if it does. I, I just had one other thing that I wanted to add to the list. If we're going to ask the applicant to come back. I feel like the applicant sort of presented this as like a small volume kind of business. And then when I asked the question how, I didn't really get an answer. And I just think that for us to approve something like this that will have an impact on the area, like I just need a little bit more detail, like even about the sewer. Like he said that it was currently a gravity sewer. Well, that probably worked when there was one house on the property. But if you put more people on the property, I just, I'm not saying they have to have a super detailed plan, but I would just like some sort of plan on how they're going to deal with sewer and water because when we approve this, this is essentially approved for 40 sort of sites. And after that, we don't really get to see it again. And so I just think you need a little bit more detail just so that I feel like I'm making a fully informed yeah. decision. But I do think that there's a path because I think there's positives, but I just needed more information. So I just wanted to say that. And somebody else will make a motion. Mr. Well, Lawless will second it. And I do think that it's important to note that, you know, that, 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 that these, these concerns and questions are in response to some of the community impact uh, issues and that our board, and we, you all know this, this is as much for the audience uh, as it is for us, but you know, we're looking at the use of the property and, and trying to judge the impact, but we also know that there are a lot of other boards and uh, that, that they do have to go f before you know, stormwater or all the other things that, that, uh, that they have to satisfy. And I think it is important for us to at least have a, a sense of path, but we will not necessarily have all of the answers. And so, uh, I think that, and I know that's what you were meaning when you were raising that issue, but, but our board isn't uh, here to solve all the issues. It's just uh, if, if that catch-all of community impact is something that is causing us all pause, it's how do we satisfy enough of that with ourselves to let them move forward. Um, I, I just don't want us to get into the next hearing and, and, you know, and get down so far deep into the woods that, uh, that it becomes a different board than we are, um, but I think it's totally appropriate. And that, just again, that was more for for the crowd's uh, perspective than it was for us because we've faced this before. Uh, so I'm I sorry. So sequencing question. Okay. I sensed you were going to make a motion, or just wanted to get yeah. a yeah. question in there. Or were you going to? I'm going to make a motion. I'm going to make a motion. So I'll, I'll if you've got a question, mm -hmm. I'll just. Yeah, I have a sequencing question, and it's about the traffic study. And from what I read, from not the. Um, specific provisions, but the general provisions that we um, may, ref the Board of Zoning Appeals, not necessarily the Metro Traffic Engineer, can require a traffic impact study for any spe special exemption land use. Now, with that, it seems to me that we can require that. Okay. So would that come to us, the results of it come to us before we potentially approved it? Or is that something that comes as a condition of our approval? Because I think it's really important to have that traffic study because in my experience, what I've learned from traffic studies is that a lot of times the applicant is um, required or the developer of the land is required to make some public improvements, which actually might be quite cost prohibitive to the applicant, and it might be in their best interest to have that traffic study done before. But I'm just wondering, sure. sequence-wise, would we be able to have that before they come back? Absolutely you can. And, and I think historically, when, when this board has required them, uh, it is before you make a condition. It, it's a, again, the language says may. You may require it of any special exception use. Historically, where this board has required it, you've required it before you made your decision. Kind of paralleling with that, this specific land use requires that the Metro Traffic Engineer tell the Coach Department, based on this plan, they need X number of spaces, which we would review. 
Uh, and the Metro traffic engineer could also require a traffic study for that. But this board, it's well within your power to require that. And I, I would say that really needs to occur before you make a render a decision on it. Uh, Mr. Chairman, one timing thing. Um, you know, cases that are deferred, I, I know this board may be headed that way. The, the, the June 17th docket we have is quite large. Uh, okay. I think, Mr. Chairman, you're going to be out absent from. Right. Uh, only those members who participate in this case can, can participate in that deferred item, too. So if, if, if there's any kind of vacation timings and, and that sort of thing, please take that into account. But that, that 17th agenda is quite quite large. Okay. So uh, we just, I mean, we're all here, so if, if any four of us could could hear it, but it would just take four, it would take all four votes to pass right at that point. I mean, we don't all have, all seven have to be back. It just, but I, I'm, I'm fine with it being the first meeting of July, that's six weeks, and that's, there's a lot we're asking. Can, can we get it all done in that short well, period it, of time? It, well, what we normally do is we say, we'll defer it to a, a date, and then if they need more time, then they could, they can just ask for more time, and it'll just come up on the docket uh, at that point. Um, so I'll make it, that motion, Mr. Chairman. Uh, sure. The, the move to defer this case to the first meeting of July uh, to give the applicant time to work with the council person uh, and the neighborhood on, and to address some of the specific issues that were raised in this hearing. Uh, motion. Can I, Mr. Lawless, can, can you uh, make a condition of that that we defer it and the applicant obtains a traffic, a, a yes, sir. traffic yes, study? Yes, thank you. That's a yes. So that's the motion. And is it seconded? I'll second it. Motion and seconded. Uh, any discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. Say aye. Any opposed? That motion passes. And members, that meeting is uh, July 1st, and it'll be at 1 p.m. in this room. All right, and we appreciate everybody coming out and being with us today. And we will take a quick little five-minute break. Thank you. 